My name is Ian Ostreicher. I'm an archaeologist from near Seattle, Washington, and I study waste management in the Neolithic period in Orkney. So the Neolithic period is essentially the period when people start to become more agriculturally based. This happens generally in Britain around 6,000 years ago. Uh, the time period that I'm working with in Orkney, our earliest date is about 3,500 BC at this particular site. Um, what this really means in Britain is a transition from a fishing, hunting, gathering type of lifestyle towards something that looks a bit more like modern farming, where you have some pastoralism, uh, you have herd animals, and you've got uh, some arable agriculture as well. Um, in the Neolithic, in Britain anyway, we have a huge fluorescence of uh, large stone and earth monuments. And um, basically these are giant stone rings, um, such as you see at Stonehenge or giant um, uh, earthworks like Avebury. Um, in Orkney, it's really interesting because there's a lot of these very, very large monumental constructions in close proximity with um, villages and actual domestic um, activity. So it's a really important place to study archaeologically because you have both of these worlds uh, in one. I'm really interested in, in types of materials that people throw away or the ways in which they uh, deposit their, um, their refuse, uh, mostly because of what you can get uh, informationally out of them. Uh, this is bone, this is uh, food remains, this is fuel sources. You can start to build a picture of how people are living with their environment. Uh, you can start to see uh, human environmental interactions. Um, for example, if you have uh, a considerable amount of uh, large wood chunks, you know that people are, are burning wood as their primary fuel source, right? You have large pieces of charcoal. Um, conversely, if you have something that's very, very, very ashy, you have completely burned material. You know that people are using their fuel sources to the absolute extreme. They're completely combusting their material. So this is no, uh, pretty much a no-waste environment. In the Neolithic period in Orkney, people used their waste in a very specific way. Uh, at the site of Scarabray, which was, is a village in the late Neolithic period, um, they actually built their houses into a pre-existing deep midden deposit. So this is almost a, like a three meter, two meter, three meter midden deposit that people dug into and built stone houses uh, directly against these midden walls. So they were actually never freestanding stone structures, but relied on that midden um, from the very beginning. So this isn't just waste disposal, but uh, an interaction with that waste material uh, in a pretty unique and specific way. Um, so I'm really interested in the interactions between that waste material, that midden, um, and where people are moving on the landscape and how they're living with that. So my research really practically involves taking sections of dirt, basically gluing it together so that it's hardened, taking a slice of that, mounting it onto a microscope slide and looking at it uh, under an optical polarized microscope. Uh, in that way you can get a sense of the interrelationships between components inside of that dirt. So uh, if you're taking a sample of a, uh, a house floor, for example, you can start to see micro laminations that won't be apparent during actual excavation. And you can get a better sense of how people actually lived in this space. A very interesting slide that I saw recently uh, consists of a, a piece of bone, which is a spongy type of bone, which occurs at the ends of long bones. So you can identify which bone that is. Well, not exactly which bone that is, but what type of bone. And this is uh, where a lot of the meat's found on, on mammals, right? So this is a piece of bone that's been um, roasted over an open fire. You can see that because part of it is actually uh, the bone itself is burnt and part of it's unburnt. Where it's unburnt, there was meat originally, uh, and where the bone is actually burnt, uh, there, was, there was no meat on the bone at the time, and so it gets more burnt than other pieces, and that's why it's differentially burnt. Now, another really interesting bit about this is that it's thrown into uh, the middle of the site on a very, very, very organic, uh, rich deposit. Now, when you look in uh, very closely at it, you see that most of it's intact, um, but then it's actually uh, really, really weathered. So it's been sitting on the surface for a long time. There's lots of uh, small pieces of bone that, get, that were broken off of the, um, the outside of the bone. So this would imply that it's been uh, trampled a little bit, um, but also that it's just been sitting out for a very long time to, to, to decay like that. So it's not rapidly buried. Um, and what this really means in terms of uh, looking at it spatially between 
two houses right in the middle of the village is that there's, uh, there's lots of waste material, there's lots of food waste material mixed with hearth deposits, uh, all dumped right into kind of the central living spaces outside of these houses. Um, and this is really interesting because it, it tells us that people are really living in and among all of this material rather than uh, moving it to a position off-site uh, to dispose of it like we would today. So this is getting at maybe a different uh, perception of sanitation, uh, different per cultural perceptions of uh, cleanliness and how you do things, right? how you live. The really great thing about uh, doing an in-depth uh, approach to uh, domestic activity is that it provides a pretty nice counterbalance to the types of dominant archaeologies that have been going on in Orkney, which is centering on these large monuments uh, like the Ring of Brodgar and Mays Howe, um, things that are really monumental. They're only part of uh, the picture of ancient life. Um, and so in order to get a fuller picture, you really have to start looking at the, the nitty gritty of, of how people are living, um, what do their houses look like, where do they dispose of their waste, and how do they live among that space. And that's really the most important aspect of this domestic research, is trying to build up that picture and see who these people really were. In the future, I think it would be really wonderful if uh, archaeologists focus more on this midden material and the finer um, resolution pictures that you get from the micromorphology, um, because really it, it shows you a lot of variation in and amongst uh, specific middens, right? So it shows you that these are different types of deposits. People are actually dumping material in different places. And if we get a larger picture um, with more sites, then we can start to compare them and start to see um, if, if these are cultural practices or if these are kind of one-off events, those kinds of things.